And so the meeting of the two seas, there are two oceans. There's the ocean of light, and there's the ocean of darkness. Two oceans. I'm going to explain this in a different way. There are several places in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the merging of the two seas. This is actually one of the reasons for the, this is the main reason for the, for the name of my platform, Border Point. Uh, and I recognize this way back over 20 years ago when I, when I purchased that domain because we were studying this, these ideas and these concepts uh, back then. And as soon as I saw, I was looking at domain names and the name Border Point came up and I thought, that's it. Now I'm sort of shifting back to using this as the name for this platform, for my website, because that's what it represents, the merging of the two seas. So the Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this idea, this concept in several places in the Quran. And in at least three or so places, Allah mentions the merging of the two seas. And perhaps one of the most important, significant so he mentions it in a couple places where he says where Allah has let loose these two seas and they are um, separated. There's a border between them that they do not trespass. They do not cross that border. And I mentioned this in the description in this video, but really quickly, I'm going to, um, if anybody's interested, I'll, I'll give you the specific references as well in the Quran. And uh, these are in Surah Rahman, right, chapter 55, verses 19 through 20. In Surah Furqan, 2533, and of course in Surah Al-Kaf, 18, verses 60 to 61. So in Surah Rahman, Allah says, He has loosed, He has, He hath loosed the two seas, meeting, and between there is a barrier which they do not cross. In Surah Al-Furqan, it is He who brought together the two seas, and between them is a barrier. And of course in Surah Al-Kaf, Moses and his servant, Moses said to his servant, I will not give up until I reach, this is important, I will not give up until I reach the meeting of the two seas. That's the words of Sayyidina Musa. And where was he going? What was he seeking? He was seeking something very special. If you're familiar with the story of Moses and Surat al-Kaf, um, some of it is described, and of course, much more of it is described in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, in the traditions and the narrations and the in the history and traditional knowledge. Essentially, Moses um, was asked if he was the most knowledgeable person on the earth. And because he was the messenger of Allah, he said, yes, I am. And then it was revealed to him, no, Moses, there's one who knows more than you. He knows something that you do not know. He has a knowledge that you have no access to. And he's one of my servants that I have taught directly from my divine presence. Allah was saying. And so Moses السلام, said, Ya Allah, where is that servant? How do I find him? And this is the greatness of the prophets of Allah. He is a messenger of Allah, and yet he is humbling himself to go learn from someone who's not even a prophet. Because he has a type of knowledge that he does not have. Ilm al as Allah describes in the Quran, knowledge directly from the divine presence of Allah. And Allah says, go to such and such a place at the meeting of the two seas, you will find him. And so Moses, Moses and his servant travels and they go to this site. To, they go seeking this special point. And yes, indeed, this is where they find Khidr alayhi salam, who's known as the teacher of the prophets. And he um, is not a prophet. We don't believe he's a prophet, but he is uh, considered to be one of Allah's chosen servants. So... Khidr alayhi salam had a type of knowledge that Moses did not have. And these two branches of knowledge are also a reference to the meeting of the two seas, the meeting of form and spirit. We have religion and spirituality. We have sharia and we have tariqa. So these are two different, this is one way to also one aspect of this topic. There are these two bodies of water, these two oceans of knowledge, these two paths, these two roads. And where they meet, that is the key. That is the secret. It is Islam and Iman. And where they meet is Ihsan. Right? As the Prophet of Allah described in the Hadith of Jibreel, when he described Islam, and then he described Iman, and then he spoke about Ihsan. Ihsan is the meeting of those two seas. Islam is the forms of the religion, the Sharia, 
Iman is the tariqah of the religion, the inner dimension. And Ihsan is the one who, Ihsan is the path. And traditionally, Tasawwuf Sufism uh, was known as one of the references to it was Ilm al Ihsan, the knowledge of Ihsan. So the spirituality of Islam is designed to enable human being to walk, to walk what? To walk the straight path, a sirat al mustaqim, which is the path in the middle, the balanced path, the path directly at the convergence, at the meeting place of these two oceans. And this is again one aspect of this of this knowledge. These two oceans of the outer and the inner, the form and the spirit, right? The material and the essence within the material. The meeting of the two seas, and also that which relates to the seen and the unseen, that which relates to the to eternity and to the temporal world. And as human beings, we are uniquely poised and positioned to have access to this sacred rank and position, to be in this point, in this position where these two seas meet. No other creation has that. Only humans can be in this world and connected to this world and the next, to the domain of time and space and the domain of the transcendent to the temporal and to the eternal. Only the human being can occupy that space. And that is where the, the true purpose of the human being is revealed. The reason for your creation, the reason for our creation is revealed at that point, that meeting of the two seas. If we lose ourselves in just the ocean of the world, these are two oceans, literal oceans, they are real oceans. If we lose ourselves just in the ocean of the world, we lose ourselves in, in reality. Okay? Because the world cannot tell you who you truly are. The world cannot give you your true identity. It can give you a temporal identity, but ultimately it's meaningless and without purpose. It's temporal. For real identity and real purpose to be actualized, it must be connected to that which is eternal. It must be connected to Allah. And that's where our real identity comes from as human beings. Our real identity comes from Allah. How can one know themselves unless they know their Lord? Unless they know their source? How can creation know itself if it doesn't know if it doesn't know its creator? And so this whole idea of finding myself that we hear about right, in the modern world, and, and it's just, it's fruitless, it's hopeless. You cannot find yourself except by moving towards Allah because your identity is with your creator. Your identity is with your Lord. If you want to find yourself, seek your Lord. That's how we find ourselves. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran as well, they forgot Allah and so Allah caused them to forget themselves. The meeting of the two seas. We have the ocean of the world and we have the ocean of reality. The ocean of darkness and density and then the ocean of light and the subtle domain and dimension. So light and darkness. And we are a combination of these two. We have density and we also have subtlety within us. And, and the life path of the human being is to cultivate light by connecting with light, the light of the divine presence of Allah. That is the path to our true selves, our true reality, our true potential, our true capacity as servants of Allah as deputies of Allah, as vicegerents of Allah. Khulafa al-Rahman, the Khulafa, the, the deputies of Allah, the most merciful. That is the purpose of religion. That is the purpose of faith. That is the purpose of spirituality. And specifically, that is the purpose of Islam, which is religion, which is faith, which is spirituality. And always has been with every prophet of Allah, including Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, all of them. They taught this. They taught to their people how to exist at the meeting of these two seas in the world and yet connected to God, reality, eternity in the world, but not entirely of the world. And you hear this statement when it comes to uh, the Christian uh, religion. They have this statement, be, of the, be in the world, but not of the world. That's what it's pointing to, right? 
it is pointing to that capacity, that potential. And that is where human potential is awakened. That is where human potential is liberated, is freed, is made manifest. That is where human identity is revealed at the meeting of the two seas, this world and the next, the outer and the inner. 